It is, oh gosh, it is Saturday night at 7 o'clock, which means it is time for a YouTube chat. All right, I'm going to just double check over here off to the left that I am transmittalating. Yes, well, I see my hands moving. That is always a good sign. And YouTube now says I'm live. So yay, hey, Kathy, appreciate you coming. Hi, Marva. Welcome. All righty, I hope you all are having a great weekend. Hey, Holly and Angie, thank you guys so much for coming. All right, so here's our card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. It's one of my favorite fun folds of all time. Uh, it starts with a, actually, let me, let me caveat that just a little bit. The book fold is one of my favorite folds ever. I really, really, really love it. Hey, Rosie and Faith, appreciate you coming. But this one I have turned into my second favorite kind of card, which is an easel card. And this one happens to be a corner, corner easel. So it has stayed on the landscape orientation. And you can see how, it, how it's setting up. And then on the inside, we have like this. And this is plenty um, pale enough to write a message on, I know, because, you know, I've used it to do that. So not a problem. I've used the um, Graceful Tile stamp set. Now, this may be one that you've kind of overlooked. It's in the annual catalog. But uh, I needed an anniversary card, and this one was a pretty sentiment. So I've used that, and then I pulled one of my favorite anniversary sentiments, which is The Best Is Yet to Come, in from the Dainty Delight set. And, of course, the ever-popular, ever-necessary, you really need to have this in your kit bag, stylish shapes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Everything will be on my blog tomorrow, which means you don't even need to take notes. Hi, Nancy and Barbara and Lynn and Karen and Jane and Donna and Debbie and Lois. Phew, glad you all could make it. Okay, so, we're go oh, oh, and the paper, in case you didn't recognize it, this is the Abigail Rose paper from the annual catalog. One of my favorites, it's beautiful. All right, I have a piece of early espresso cardstock that seems to have gotten a little bit of adhesive on it. There we go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make my standard book fold. Easy and also peasy. So it's four and a quarter by 11, and I am going to score at five and a half, and again at six and three quarters. And that is the basis for the book fold. Now, if you were making just a regular book fold, you would go ahead and fold everything up and adhere it, and you would be ready to go. But since we're making this into a corner easel, we have one more score line to make. So if you folded this, you would see that this is the, the front of the card. So what we want to do is score from this corner to that score line, okay? Because we're actually turning this into the easel itself, into the corner easel. So all you have to do is put the top corner in your cutting channel, which is actually gonna be a scoring channel, and then lining this score line up with the scoring channel on the bottom, and giving it a little score like so. And that, as they say in some industry somewhere, is about the end of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all scored, or uh, burnished, hi Mary. Hi, Sherry and Beverly and Marianne. Appreciate you guys all coming. Now, we'll go ahead and put this together. Let me bend that backwards. So basically what you do is you're going to be making a Z, right? A Z, a Z, like that. There, a Z. And then we're just going to put some adhesive on this one and one quarter inch portion of the front. And that is what is going to create the, um, you know, before I do that, I think I will go ahead and fold that. It'll be a lot easier to fold before it is adhered. There we go. Okay, so now, now we're ready to adhere it. I almost borked that. Did you see it? It was so close, but I didn't. Yay. And bork is a strong term because it would have been, it would have been still doable. It just would have been a little more awkward, but we could have done it. There we go, so there's the liquid glue done. And now, I wanna show you a little trick. If you look at my DSP, you can see that the lines are matched right across there, okay? And here's how I did that. I have four of my card front pieces. I need two card front pieces, right? So what I have is a three and seven eighths inch tall 
by four and three quarters inch long piece of the Abigail Rose. And I have it with the long, the long direction horizontal, okay? As opposed to like this. Okay, gotcha. So what I'm gonna do first is I am going to cut off from this end, I'm gonna cut off seven eighths of an inch. Okay, and that is going to be the right, the little small panel on the front. And then this will become the larger square card front. And we have a perfectly matched line, okay? Now, do you have to do that? No, of course not. You can do however you want. They don't even have to be the same DSPs. I mean, why would they have to be the same DSPs? But in this case, they are, and I thought it would be fun to have that match like that. Hey, Cheryl, appreciate you. I'm so glad that you, uh, you were able to join us live tonight. All right, so I'm just gonna use some liquid glue. Remember, liquid glue is like the penultimate liquid glue. See that big word I used there? And just so you know, with my sticky sweet ordering special going on right now, if you place an order of $50 or more, you'll get your $10 ordering gift. You'll get two peppermint reward points. You'll get a $50 celebration goodie. And you'll get to pick one of about a list of like 10 or 12 adhesives that you could choose. And if you choose liquid glue, you get two bottles of it. So kind of a great deal that runs through the 14th. I highly recommend you get in on it. Get it, get you some, get you some. All right, and then I'm just gonna do this onto, oh, and this is sweet sorbet. Maybe I didn't mention it. I don't know if I mentioned it or not. Did I mention that? I don't know. Y'all, it is just raining and nasty here. Just raining and also nasty. And it's really not very pleasant. I'm just saying, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna show you another little trick. I want to put a piece of this, this is uh, Petal Pink, 3 8 inch soft polyester ribbon, and it is very soft and very lovely. Very nice ribbon. Hey, Barbara, I appreciate you joining. From Port Ritchie, Newport Ritchie, gotcha. All right. I'm gonna use glue dots on this, and we're gonna make a faux bow, and that is simply an easy way to make a bow without having to make a bow. All right, so I'm just gonna roll that around and cut it. Like so. This isn't the bow. Don't think this is the bow, faux or otherwise. This is not the bow. We're just gonna wrap that around and adhere it. And I want it snug, but not so snug that it's um, pulling the, the cardstock into a, a bow. Huh. Weird that I would have bow in so many of my words right then, huh? Okay, now I'm going to cut another length. This is how we're going to do our faux bow. And I'm going to tuck it under the ribbon and tie a just a simple half knot. And we're going to muck with it a little bit until it gets kind of pretty. And we're gonna cut the ends a little bit more to make it look more like a bow. Okay. So that piece is going to go right here like this. Now here's the trick that I wanted to show you. When I did this for my sample, when I, I did it, I thought it was gonna go this way. Does that make sense? And the way this knot turned out, it really wanted to go this way. So. I kind of didn't do anything with my card front until I saw which way this panel wanted to be on the card. Okay, because of that, that stripey match thing, okay? In this case, I got really lucky and it worked out good. And <laughs> there's no particularly one way or the other that is better. But it's just something that will save you some oh darn time moments, I promise. Tr trust me on that. All right. And here we go. Hi, Jean. Thanks, Rosie. Appreciate that. And Lenny, glad you were able to join us tonight. I'm going to use some liquid glue here to adhere this to the small panel 
on the side. And just so you know, I am not working on the card front. Unt I'm not going to put the card front on until I have decorated it. Okay, so there we go. And you can see it beginning to start. Now, before I get going, I'm going to double check that I've got the right side up. Okay, so you can see those lines match. And so this is up. All right. Sadite, sadite. Okay, okay. Now, here's the fun part. Now we're going to decorate. Now we're going to decorate. Now, I've done a little ahead of time because nobody wants to watch me do it all, I promise. So let me show you what we've done, what those things are that I have done. Now, remember I told you we were using the stylus shapes. I have used the second, the first from the smallest, okay, so the next to smallest of the stitched stylus shapes square. And then the inside sentiment is the third from the smallest circle. And I used that square to cut out two pieces of the Abigail Rose, like that. And on a piece of basic white, I cut two, I stamped two of these. So I stamped one of these, this medallion, and one of these. And I'm going to do another one of these to show you how that went, okay? So let me get my piece of basic white. And let's see, I want this, this one, this one right here. And I'm going to use my embossing buddy which has gone walkabout just a second oh embossing buddy where are you hang on it's sitting right here probably looking right at me do you guys see it am i looking right at it no uh huh well it's gonna be a problem it'll so there's two ways i can look at this i can look at it as just go for it mary and then, of course, I will get embossing powder every which way from everywhere. See, I should never clean up my desk. There it is. Darn it. Okay. Use the embossing buddy first just to give myself a fighting chance of getting a clean image. And then we're going to stamp it in Versamark. We're going to use gold embossing powder. All right. Sudate, sudate. Okay, okay. And I'm going to put it kind of up in the center here so I have plenty of room around it. Put the lid on the Versamark, Mary. Trust me on that, people. Put the lid on the Versamark. I'm not going to say I have ever blown on my embossing powder and blown it right into my Versamark pad, but I totally have. I totally have. Okay, and we'll give that a little flip. Make sure there's not a lot of extra embossing powder around. I bought some of these really high dollar paint brushes. Um, this one says Ranger, but it was like at the grocery store, I think. I really wasn't spending a lot of money. It was just to brush off embossing powder. Now, this is gonna get a little loud, sorry, sorry. We're gonna emboss it up, and this is where the fun happens, so I'll try to keep it where you can see it. See the magic happen. This is why so many people fall in love with stamping, is because they see heat embossing for the first time. You see it starting to change? The gold is particularly nice, because you can really see it change. Ooh, ah, I know you're sitting at home going, what alchemy is this? What? What? Okay. Now, here's a heat embossing tip. This, until this powder cools, even though it has um, changed shapes, changed forms, it's still a little squishy, so give it a second to cool off, okay? Yep, Marianne happens to us all. And I'm going to, okay, that seems to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out right quick. I'll be right back. I'll be, I'll be right at the back. I'm just going to do this off camera. Why? Because it shakes the table so bad. Oops. And all I'm doing is making it straight in the square. All right. And this square is just the exact right size 
for this stamped image, so it works out perfectly. It works out perfectly. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna take my Sweet Sorbet and Petal Pink markers, and I'm just gonna do just a little bit of coloring, okay? And not very much. I really am only adding a touch of color. I'm going to use the petal pink in these little, little large teardrop looking doohickeys. Uh, another tip, you don't want to count on your Stampin' Blends for coloring an embossed image. The alcohol in the marker acts weirdly with the embossing powder. It will actually melt it and take it back to its sludgy liquid form. So you can do it, but it's it's a bit of a trick, and I highly recommend that you just go with the Stampin' Right marker, okay? So then I'm gonna use my Sweet Sorbet marker to color these little tiny ones, like so. Just add a little touch of color, like that, and that's all. Then I'm gonna take that Stampin' Blend, I'm gonna take that Stampin' Blend and color the image on the, hey Sharon, hey Jeffrey, appreciate you joining. Color the image on the uh, Abigail Rose DSP. Now, let me just say this about that. I'm pretty sure those are leaves and I know for certain those are stems. But in this case, we're really not looking for realism we're just looking for pretty. And so I am taking a little license and coloring all of the white areas. Petal pink, petal pink. Guys, you guys, I think I have mentioned the Pantry Mama for sourdough recipes. Well, I have been pulling um, sourdough blueberry muffins out of my freezer. I individually wrapped them and froze them. And you take them out and let them thaw for a little while or thaw them easy in the microwave. And they're wonderful. And today, Wayne said, "Where do you have more of those blueberry muffins? And I'm thinking, oh, do you not like them? And he's like, no, I love them. So I also had, I had a lot of discard. It uses discard. And everybody who makes sourdough ends up with discard. And we all are looking for reasons and things to, to make with it. And so... I also had three ripe, and I do mean ripe, whoo, ripe bananas, almost to the, okay, it's even too late to cook with them stage. Not quite, they weren't, they're fine. So I found on the Pantry Mama's website, banana muffins, but sourdough banana muffins. And I really thought they were gonna be like banana bread, but in muffin form and they are not. They taste completely different. They are a much milder um, banana flavor, and I put chocolate chips in mine, because chocolate and banana, hello, and y'all, they are wonderful, wonderful. That's the Pantry Mama. She is the bestest sourdough resource I have ever found. So if y'all are into sourdough, any of you, I highly recommend finding her, checking her out. Okay. So now I have the five tiles that I want to use on my card. And the next step, if I hadn't already done it, I've actually done it a few times. I'm not going to tell you how, how long this card took me to design. I will not even tell you because I'm a little embarrassed by it. But until you have it designed, don't give up on it. Just keep working, keep trying until finally your brain goes, yep. There it is, uh-huh. And once it does that, then start adhering. But don't give up too quick. It's so easy to give up. I, I promise it's so easy to give up because it can be very frustrating when you see, you know what you want it to look like, but you cannot make it do it. And I even, I'm not even gonna tell you, this is not my first iteration of this card at all, but I ended up really liking how it looked. Okay, so this is the design I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these guys up, the middle ones, and we'll adhere these two down to start with. I know, Sharon, it is a wonderful, wonderful. Um, so when I travel, what I do is I feed it right before I leave 
and I put it in my fridge. And it just sits there quietly. The refrigerator um, retards the growth. It slows the growth down. And then when I come home, I, um, I, I pull it out onto the counter and I discard and feed. And then I, I feed it once or twice a day for a couple of three days just to kind of get it, you know, bumped back up, especially if it's not giving me a good double. Um, but I've managed to get myself a pretty nice mature starter now. The other thing that she recommends and that I have now done is I've taken some of my discard and I have dehydrated it. And so I dehydrated it really good and crumbled it up, powdered it up, and put it in a jar in my cupboard. So if ever I, you, you might remember about a year ago, I had a tragedy, a tragedy with my sourdough. I pulled the sourdough out of the refrigerator and it was pink. And I'm talking petal pink. It wasn't good. No one wanted to eat that, least of all us. So I lost it and I, I bought a new sourdough starter from King Arthur Flour and it was wonderful and it's been wonderful ever since. And the things I've learned from the Pantry Mama, really, really good. Um, I've learned a lot about the concept, about how sourdough works and why you need to do things. And some things that confounded me when I started are now starting to make sense. And so it's it's really, she's really, really good. So I highly recommend that you look her up. Okay, let's see, Angie. Did you use Pantry Mama, King Arthur, or another when you started your starter? Okay, um, the first starter I had that turned pink was from a friend of mine. She had dehydrated her starter and she sent me a dehydrated start and I started it from there. And then when I lost that one, I purchased one just because I just didn't have the energy to start another one. Um, I purchased a starter from King Arthur Flower and it was cool because I, I got the, the liquid starter and it came in a little jar. They, you know, shipped it on Friday to be there on Monday and it was cold and it was perfect. And they gave me all the instructions. I mean, it was just a little bit, like we're talking a couple of tablespoons of starter. And that's the one I've had ever since. And it's been, it's been quite, quite good. So there you go. But actually, she has really multiple blog posts on how to start a starter. And one of the things that I did when I first started, I think, is I got impatient. I thought, well, I've done this for five or six days now, and it ought to be good, even if it doesn't seem to be doubling, right? But it wasn't as good as it could. It wasn't as robust as it needed to be. So I've learned from her to slow down and wait and really, really wait until that thing is a good, robust starter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Jean. Thinking I'd rather have a puppy if I have to feed it. Well, there's that, Stephanie, but you know what? When it's pouring down rain, your starter doesn't need to go out and go for a walk and get all wet. I'm just saying. Just throwing that out there for your consideration. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to make us a Farrah Fawcett bow, which is what I call the um, linen, a double loop linen thread bow. And I'm going to pull out my linen thread and give it a little run through with my bone folder to kind of straighten it out a little bit. Now here's how you do a double loop bow. Got all of your, you don't, don't, don't unclip, un, don't cut your, your linen thread yet. Hold the end between your thumb and your forefinger. And then we're going to wrap around all four fingers four times. So one, two, three, and four. Pull the end out. You don't want it hooked up. And then you're going to roll around two fingers four times. So there's one, two, three, and four. And you can play that back if you want. I've also done a short out on my YouTube video channel that is all about the double loop linen thread bow. So at this point, you pull, I've pulled it off my fingers. I have a small circle, small loop inside a big loop. I'm just going to pull these two ends together and then I'm going to do this is I'm going to do it in slow motion, okay? Boop 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 boop. Okay, one more time. I'm making a figure 8. So I'm going boop 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 and it'll help if you make that sound. Boop 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 like that. Okay. And then you're going to take your uh reverse tweezers and you're going to use it as a third hand to hold right there in the in the middle where you made the figure eight. Cut another little piece of the linen 
thread. Linen thread is my favorite thing ever. I'm just saying. Well, okay, my favorite embellishment. How about that? Because dimensionals are my favorite thing ever. Well, maybe my reverse tweezers. No, I don't know. I have several very, very favorite things. Okay, and so you're going to do two overhand knots around it just to secure it good, okay? Right there like that. And then you can take your tweezers off, and then you're just going to ferrofaucetize it, okay? Yes, once Mary gets started, I can't. It's true. It's been a while. It feels like it's been a long time since I've made a ferrofaucet bow, but it's true. The good news is I do already have like five or six rolls in my drawer because I do keep it. Toilet paper, coffee, dimensionals, and linen thread are things that I do not ever wish to run out of. When the zombie apocalypse comes, the thing I have in my emergency prep pantry is Stampin' Dimensionals, toilet paper, coffee, and linen thread. Okay, so there we go. And we're going to just adhere it right there, like right about there, with a glue dot. Now, obviously, I did not figure that out right then. I knew it because I've already made one. But until you know what it is that you want to do, play with it. The six million dollar bow. Okay, sorry. Okay, now we're gonna make a couple of um, sentiments. One for the front, and one as the easel. And I've used, um, I've made these out of petal pink. So our first sentiment is for the front, and it is going to be from Graceful Tiles, the Happy Anniversary sentiment. And I'm gonna tell you what, I made about 700 of these as well until I got the one that I liked. Okay, so there's the front. And then also on Petal Pink with Early Espresso, I'm using that Dainty Delight sentiment. And this is on the um, third from the smallest circle stylish shapes die. We're just going to center it up. It doesn't matter if it's straight because I can make it straight by turning the circle. And there we go. Now, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I am going to emboss both of those in the quatrefoil tile embossing folder. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to emboss it first before you stamp it with the sentiment. Just saying. So I'll be right back. Hang on. Be hanging on. Be hanging on. All right. And this is a regular embossing folder, not a 3D embossing folder. So it's a normal sandwich. It doesn't use the gray plate. It just uses number one, two acrylic plates, and then the embossing folder between them. The 3D, the 3D ones use the gray plate. All right, so there we go. And this little guy we're going to mat on a piece of sweet sorbet. <laughs> yes, my, my TED talk on sourdough is free today for you only. Okay. Now, because I'm going over that big old bow right there, I'm going to do double stacked Stampin' Dimensionals. And all that means, and I'm going to put it on the card front, not on the sentiment. Okay. So, you know, I'm, that is not looking right, is it? I'm not sure what happened there. What have we got? That's not right, is it? Oh, well, it's because I was a little long there. Now watch, don't look, okay? Just don't even watch. This is just, just don't watch. Well, there's nothing to watch right yet because I don't know where my scissors went. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna Trim that off right there like that. It was just like a hair too long. There. 
now it's more balanced. And now it's a Mobetta. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to adhere it across the mat, the card front like this. And so I'm putting my dimensionals on the card front itself so that I don't have to mess with that bow, right? Nobody wants to mess with their bows. Nobody, nobody does. Nobody does. All you gotta do is just kind of be sure you're staying within the confines of the sentiment. And I am going to do that. And I also try not to uh, get my bow in the way. And then you just go ahead, do a, do a quick check, measure twice, adhere once. Yes, Mary has started making sourdough crackers and they are divine. They are amazing. I gotta tell you, I enjoy cooking and I really enjoy baking. I also enjoy eating, which I have to really work hard to not do as much of. I really do, it's hard. Okay, so then I have put the second stack on there, second dimensional one on top of the other. And then I will adhere this and I'm gonna try to get it straight. I think straight would be good. Let's go with straight here, Mare. All right, just like that, perfect. Okay, now we have some embellishments because nothing is complete without some bling, without some bling. And I have, these are like my favorite, these pastel adhesive backed sequins. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna trim that down a little bit. That's just a little bit too wild, Farah. A little too wild, Farah. Come on now. And I'm gonna use the gold ones because they're so pretty. And I'm gonna put one right here and a small one right here. And then where did my champagne rhinestones go? It's a champagne rhinestone. Do, do. I'm gonna put one right there. And then we're gonna do some more sequins, some more sequinas like this. I'm gonna put a large sequin there and then I'm gonna put a medium champagne jewel and a small champagne jewel. And then one more small champagne jewel oh, right there. That looks good. Okay, and that needs another dimensional. I could come out another whole dimensional, so let's do that. Because you're like, okay, Mary, I'm bored now. Hello, you're taking way too long. So I'm just gonna stack this dimensionals, these dimensionals up. And I do try to make them go the same direction like that. I don't know why. I don't think you'd have to, but I do. I had to, I have to. Okay, there we go. So there is our card front. Now, let me show you how to, actually, let's go ahead and put the inside in first. This one is quite simple. I'm just going to adhere this piece of the Abigail Rose to Sweet Sorbet cardstock. And just because I think it's fun, I am going to go, instead of horizontal with the stripes, I'm gonna go vertical with the stripes. I know, I'm a wild and crazy girl like that. See, I think you have to be of a certain age to get that reference. And I definitely am, because I know exactly who I was talking about. All right, so there we go. Now here's our concept. We're going to have our easel on here, and we're going to have our easel stop right there but I'm gonna put it on after I build the easel. Now here's how to do this. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, here we go. You want to adhere to this bottom triangle only, not this back part. If you adhere to the back part, you're going to make yourself a regular old book fold. And I am gonna put my liquid glue on the card front, staying well within where I'm quite certain my card front will be. Use a little more liquid glue than I normally do, just because it does a lot of moving. And then the, lay this down flat and then set it on just like it was the card front, like it was a regular old card front, okay? So you're gonna line up and all things being equal, this point, This point right here will be on that score line and this point down here will be on that score line, okay? So give it a second for the liquid glue to take hold and then you can see 
what it does like that. So we'll put some dimensionals on the back. We don't need to use black ones. No, no. Okay, here we go. We're gonna put three or four or five dimensionals on the back of our easel. Stop, our easel stop. It's not an easel, it's a stop. And then we're gonna figure out where it wants to be and it should be right about there. Now, I have spent a little time stressing over whether it should be straight like this, and then I thought, well, that looks just dumb. So we're gonna put it on so it's like this, and then you can see how it will hold it up when it is, ad it is adhered, okay? So basically, I'm putting it right in the corner of that panel. Easy peasy. I know, we are just wild and crazy. Oh, you saw him in person, how fun. Oh my goodness. I'll bet that was a, a hoot and a half. I think the only one who might have been more fun would have been to see Robin Williams in person. He was, he is just a dude. He was a funny, funny man. So bad that he had so many inner demons. That's very sad. Okay, so we're just gonna put that right there like that. And then, because I love them, they're one of my favoriteest things ever, I'm gonna put another couple of, dimension, of champagne rhinestones and a little sequiny, a sequiny. We're gonna put a sequiny there, and then I'm gonna put another sequiny up here, but I'm gonna use a small one right there, like so. And that is our card. So it goes right in the envelope because it's really four and a quarter by five and a half, just like regular. But when your recipient gets it, it's a display card. And there's plenty of room to write your message. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. It's kind of the perfect card. It's just kind of the perfect card. All right, now I know I made a envelope something or other. Hang on, let me get my envelope out. Gosh, gosh, it's like I'm not even paying attention or something. Good Lord. All right, here we go. Now I'm just gonna use a basic white envelope and I'm gonna use this uh, medallion again, but I'm not gonna emboss on this because I don't think that it would go well through the um, postal service, I'm just saying. So I'm gonna stamp it in early espresso right on the front of the card. I mean the envelope, duh, <laughs> duh. And while I'm waiting for that to get a little bit drier, because you know those dark colors, they take a second sometimes. And it's not a really long time, but for me it's, it's smarter to wait a second before I rub my finger across there to see if it's dry. Because if it isn't, guess what? Just saying. All right, and then we will do the world's easiest fussy cut. There we go. And I'm not even gonna do my normal spiel about using your holding hand to turn the paper, not your scissor hand. Edward's scissor hand, no. And then I'll take my little Stampin' Write markers and color these little pieces so that they coordinate nicely with the card. Also, it's really cute. I like it a lot with these little colors. Don't you like how Sweet Sorbet and Petal Pink go together? I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, I'm happy. I'm really surprised that I actually picked two good colors to go together. But I was a little bit surprised. But it's very pretty, very pretty. Okay, we're almost done. Hang with me, people. Hang with me. And on this one, because I can, and it's much more visible than it is with the embossed ones, I'm coloring that center one too, because I can. There we go. All right, and there it is. A book fold corner easel anniversary card, courtesy of the Graceful Tile stamp set and some gorgeous Abigail Rose DSP. All right, guys, I appreciate you. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl, whether you watch it for the game or for the commercials or both. I don't know, I'm rooting for the Chiefs. I can't help it, I like Patrick Mahomes. So there you go. We're gonna see who does the deal and don't eat too many chicken wings, okay? We'll see you guys on Thursday. Thanks, ta.